on our planet, in our solar system, how many people are employed to actually look at space? A million? Half a million? The answer is about 10,000. That's the total membership of the IAU. You might remember them from the Pluto controversy. If every human alive today were grains of sand, there would be eight trucks of sand. But the astronomers represent only about half a level teaspoon of sand. This half a teaspoon is the interface between all of humankind alive today and our understanding of space. But every year around the world, nearly one billion dollars of telescopes are sold to regular people like you and me. The home telescope industry exploded like many other hobbies during the pandemic. The countries who bought the most telescopes during the pandemic were the United States, Germany, the United Kingdom, Canada, Algeria, France, the Netherlands, Sweden and Australia. So when something happens in space, who is more likely to see it first? One of the 10,000 professional astronomers with their big telescopes? Or one of the millions of backyard astronomers just like me and you who bought a telescope online or in a shop, maybe even during the pandemic? Professional astronomers have access to bigger survey telescopes that scan large patches of sky and detect transient events like distant stars exploding or anonymous asteroids which are then catalogued and tracked. Their orbits are then calculated to see whether they're a threat to humanity. But who's looking at Jupiter or Saturn or any other planet near us right now? Is anyone really looking at these planets 24 hours a day, seven days a week? With all the backyard astronomers, there's a good chance that there is someone out there with a backyard telescope looking at a planet or the moon while you're watching this video. Sometimes they see collisions from nowhere, usually from asteroids we didn't even know were there. In 2006, astronomers began to coordinate to scan every recorded video of Jupiter and Saturn using software provided by professional astronomer Marc Delacroix in order to look for these mysterious impacts and try to determine how frequently they occur. In a single night, I might record over 100 gigabytes of planetary data while I'm looking at Jupiter, but the odds that I'll catch an impact is tiny. An impact may be visible for only two seconds, and there may only be seven of those to see in a year. So each second I spend looking at Jupiter is a one in a 15 million chance of catching an impact event. And how many people on Earth are actually doing this? For Jupiter, it's about 200 observers. For Saturn, only 100. These people have day jobs, families, and lives to live besides looking at Jupiter and Saturn all night. Not to mention the weather. So the truth is, no, we don't have eyes on the planets all the time. There are things in space we know, things we don't know, and things we don't know that we don't know. To date, nine impacts have been recorded by the DETECT group. An impact on Saturn has not yet been recorded. You could be the first. If there aren't enough professional astronomers to look at all the planets all the time, and almost a billion dollars of telescopes are sold to people like you and me every year, more of us can use those telescopes to monitor for impact events and contribute to the science of impact detection. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to use the Jupiter and Saturn Asteroid Detection Impact Software Detect to see if you've found anything. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff.
If you can take a photo of a planet, you can use this software. It's super easy. Just download and install the software. I don't need to teach you guys how to do that. Uh, I've installed the software, so I'm just gonna open it. And you really don't need to touch anything. Don't change any of the defaults. You can click on this button here that says select folder recursively and just point it to your Jupyter folder. That'll be the Jupyter folder that FireCapture creates uh, or wherever you keep all your planetary data. And don't worry about the subfolders, it'll just pick all of the subfolders up. So I'm going to pick that one. And as soon as you do that, it starts processing. This will take a while. Okay, that's finished and you'll see that it pops up some preview images as we... We've got three little links here. Uh, first, I'm going to click detection images to check and it shows you here in the preview where it suspects there might be an impact, if there is one. Uh, these are consistent on mine because I have a dead pixel. You'll find that it gets confused sometimes with moons and shadows and pixels and things like that. But if we check the log down here, it's pretty confident that they are not impacts. So it will tell you when it's confident that there is. Uh, see it says three acquisitions without any impacts. So now we want to send the email to the team so that they can add your data to their results. So click this send results button here and that will open up an email to Mark directly. You put a checkbox here to say nothing suspect and then it wants you to attach the impact detection file. So that will be sitting in that folder. It actually opens it up for you. This zip file here has the log file and the images. So you just drag that into the email and you hit send. That's it. You've done some science. And you were doing this anyway. This is a consequence of taking photos of the planets. You end up with data, and normally we just chuck that data away because we're trying to save hard drive space from night to night. And you can still chuck that data away, but scan it first for impacts, and then if there's anything interesting, you can hold on to that data. And even if you don't detect any impacts, it's the null results that make all the difference. You see, Mark and his team are trying to figure out the frequency of impacts on Jupiter. And this means knowing when there are no impacts, so that if we can confirm at any given time when we're looking at Jupiter and no impacts are occurring, that data is important for their calculation as well. So hit send on the email, send, contribute to the team, and you will end up on the leaderboard. There's a lot of familiar names in this list, and there's one new name on this list today. What a great project and what a great way to engage the amateur astronomy community with a professional astronomer, Marc Delcroix. Thank you to Marc for helping me out as I started out on this journey and thank you for the software. Now, if you wanna do this, you don't need a dome like mine. You don't need an equatorial mount. You don't need anything except a telescope and a camera that's capable of taking a photo of a planet. If you wanna dip your toe in the water and start with astronomy like this, check out the show sponsor, High Point Scientific. They're an American vendor with a huge range of products and they can sell you what you need to get started with planetary photography. They have a price match guarantee and they're here to help you with your astrophotography. So give them a shout out, tell them I sent you. And I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a bit of a different edit, different edit style for me. Uh, hopefully it landed okay. And just wanted to say thank you for all your support. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to pay any money. Just watching and subscribing helps me a lot. I will not ask for anything else. That's more than enough, so thank you. My name is Dylan O'Donnell, and you've been watching Star Stuff. And remember, everything is meaningless, and we're all going to die.